Hi, welcome to Moo Moo Math. Today we're going to look at what I'm calling uh, Solving Trig Equations Part 2. We're going to look at the harder kinds of solving. We're going to look at a new method, which is using squaring both sides to solve. And then how do you handle the solutions for multiple angles? So let's look at the first one. So find all the solutions to cosine x plus 1 is equal to sine x on the interval 0 to 2 pi. Now what makes this one a little bit different is you, you can't replace a cosine or a sine with a Pythagorean identity because they're not squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a method of squaring both sides so that we can then use a Pythagorean identity because sine and cosine don't really talk to each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to square both sides. Okay, once we do that, we can take this left side and FOIL it out because we have cosine of x plus 1 times cosine of x plus 1. So let me write that out so you can see that. Times another cosine x plus 1. And you can see it's just two binomials, so we're going to FOIL those together. And then this is just a sine squared x. Okay, so when we multiply this together, we're going to get cosine squared x plus 2 cosine x plus 1. And then on the other side, we have a sine squared, but we want them to be able to... to be, we want to convert this to one trig function. So I'm going to use the Pythagorean identity 1 minus cosine squared x. Now I've got everything in terms of sines and cosine, or everything's in terms of cosine. Now let's combine our like terms. And I'm going to add cosine squared x to both sides. And I'm going to subtract 1 both sides. So what are we left with? We're left with 2 cosine squared x plus 2 cosine x and then this zeroes out so equals 0. Now this left side I can factor. I have a GCF of 2 cosine x. So I'm going to factor out my 2 cosine x and I'm left with cosine x plus 1 equals 0. And then set each one equal to 0. Once you factor, you've got when is cosine of x equal to 0. And when is cosine x plus 1 equal to 0. So this left side, just divide both sides by 2 you just get cosine x equals 0. What angle is cosine 0? Well, we know that's at pi halves and 3 pi halves on the interval 0 to 2 pi. And then when is cosine negative 1? Cosine x negative 1. We know that's when x is pi. So there we go. We have those three solutions for this equation on the interval 0 to 2 pi. So what do we do? We squared both sides and then we were able to convert it to just a factoring quadratic. Okay, so let's look at a second one. This one involves multiple angles. Okay, how do you recognize multiple angles? Well, there's a coefficient in front of your angle. So in this case, we've got cosine of 3x. So how you're going to solve it is you're just going to kind of ignore the fact that you have a multiple angle in the beginning and just solve it like you, we've been solving these. So we're going to take cosine or 2 cosine of whoops, 3x minus 1 equals 0. We're going to add 1 to both sides. So cosine, I'm sorry, 2 cosine of 3x is equal to 1. Divide both sides by 2. Cosine of 3x is equal to 1 half. Okay, now this is where it changes slightly. 
Okay, we're going to identify what positions cosine is equal to one half. Sorry, making a little more room here. Well, cosine is one half. Let's think about that. It's right here at pi thirds and right here at five pi thirds. So we're going to set the angle of 3x equal to a pi thirds. We're also going to set the angle 3x equal to 5 pi thirds because those are the answers. Now, what you've got to do here is you have to consider the period of cosine. The period of cosine is 2 pi n, okay, which is all the recurring solutions. You're going to set your angle, 3x, equal to not only that angle, but recurring angles. Then we're going to divide both sides by 3, which is the same as multiplying by 1 third, right? So multiply everything by 1 third. And what we're going to end up with is x is equal to, this part becomes pi ninths, plus 2 thirds pi n. And there's one of our general solutions. The next one, I'm going to do the same thing. I've got 3x is equal to 5 pi thirds. I'm going to add the cycle of 2 pi n to that for my general solutions. I'm going to then multiply by 1 third, which is the same as dividing by 3. So multiply each part by 1 third. And that gives me x is equal to 5 pi ninths plus... 2 pi n all over 3. And those are our solutions. Now, if we want to know the solutions on the interval 0 to 2 pi, we then take our general solution, sorry, we take our general solution and we just list them all. So if you're asked for general solutions, you're done. If you're asked for solutions on the interval 0 to 2 pi, what we're going to do is just list all of them that, that occur. So the first one, of course, is pi ninths. Now, I'm going to add a 2 pi thirds to that, which is in the form of, if we multiply top and bottom by 3, that's 6 pi ninths. Okay, so what's pi ninths plus 6 pi ninths? Well, that's... 7 pi ninths. That's still less than 2 pi. So let's add another 6 pi ninths. So that would then bring us up to 13 pi ninths. If we added yet another 6 pi ninths, that would bring us to 19 pi ninths. That's outside the unit circle, so it's just these three answers. Now, just to give you a helpful hint, if your coefficient is 3, you're going to have 3 times the number of solutions that you normally would. So pi nights represented 1, and then we added 2 more, so that was a total of 3 solutions. Okay, 5 pi nights is the first one for this set of answers. Now, because we're dealing with that 3 again, we're going to have 2 more. So let's take 5 pi ninths and let's add a 6 pi ninths. Whoops. I was thinking 6 and wrote, I was thinking 6 and I wrote 6 instead of 9. So 6 pi ninths. And that one's going to give me 11 pi ninths. That is indeed less than 2 pi because we know 18 pi ninths is 2 pi. And let's add another 6 pi ninths, and that's going to give us 17 pi ninths. That's the last one that falls within the interval 0 to 2 pi. So there we go. This one had six solutions. So 
So how could you tell? Well, normally it would have had two, the pi nights and the five pi nights. Then we're adding the interval of two pi n to it, or actually two pi, two thirds pi n. And it created three times as many solutions on the unit circle. So that's what this three will do. So there you go. So now let's look at a multiple angle, but with tangent. And the reason I wanted to do one with tangent is because we know the period for tangent is pi instead of two pi. So it's going to change our answer slightly. So let's go ahead and solve this just like we normally do. So I'm going to subtract three from both sides. And we're going to get three tangent of pi halves. And notice our multiple angle this time is not a coefficient. It's not a whole number. It's a fraction. It's half of x. So it's going to change things a little bit. And then tangent of x over 2 is equal to negative 1 by dividing by positive 3. So we need to think about where tangent is negative 1. Okay, tangent is negative 1 on the interval right here and right here. So on the interval 0 to 2 pi, we have two positions, right? The first one as we go around the unit circle is actually at 3 pi fourths. The second one, as we go around the unit circle, is at 7 pi fourths. We want only the answers 0 to 2 pi, so those are the only two we're going to kind of set up. So the first one, let's set up the angle, which is pi halves this time. We're going to set it equal to 3 pi fourths. And we're going to think about adding pi into it because then it's going to repeat every pi, right? It's just pi apart. So it actually accounts for this other one over here because if I take 3 fourths and I add pi into it, I get 7 pi fourths. So I can just leave that as my answer, okay? Now, I need to solve for x. So I'm going to multiply everything by 2 on the both sides, the whole equation by 2. So x is equal to 2 times 3 pi fourths, oops, I didn't get my last line in there, plus 2 pi n. So that changed this cycle to 2 pi n. Now what's going to happen here is I'm going to end up with 3 pi halves. So my final answer is 3 pi halves plus 2 pi n. And there's my final answer for x. Now, what is happening is whenever you have a coefficient on your angle, in this case, the coefficient was 1 half x, you're going to have half the number of solutions on the interval 0 to 2 pi. On the other one, we had a coefficient of 3. You're going to have three times the number of solutions on the interval 0 to pi. So this one ended up, instead of having two solutions, it had six. This one actually had two solutions on the interval 0 to 2 pi until we applied the 1 half, and then it only ended up with one answer, which is 3 pi halves on the interval 0 to 2 pi. So here is our general solution. And then if we want the answer just on the interval 0 to 2 pi, our answer would just be the 3 pi halves. x equals 3 pi halves. And that is the only answer. So it has half the number of solutions. So anyway, there we go. Now, what are we doing today? We're doing more solving. Uh, these are the harder ones. This is the, these are the ones you may have to use some identities with them. You may have to square both sides if they can't talk to each other, or you might have multiple angle problems. So have at it. See what you can do with the more difficult solving.